Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. You want to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable? Read. 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 I don't know how many times you probably heard this or how many times you've come across uh, people telling you that leaders are readers. And we all know about the magical brain boosting powers of reading and how our clients and our stakeholders are always consuming content so that they too can have a happier existence. Now, if you're going to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable, I suggest you continuously learn. And one of the ways for you to be learning is to actually pick up an, a book and read. Okay. You know what? People are reading all the time. You read a few lines that led you to this podcast. You know, people are Googling stuff. Those are words that they use to make sense of the world around them. People are always sharing stuff, content. They're reading what their friends are reading. They email links to their friends when you're on holiday or when people are on holiday, they're taking either a Kindle to read some more. All right. So if you're a coach or a consultant who's not reading or better yet, who hasn't got articles, books, blogs, reports, podcasts like this one, or updates about what it is that you're doing, then it's very, it's going to be very difficult for you to actually be a success within your business. But how do you constantly have new and informative content? And how do you actually start creating that much content at scale? Well, you can actually borrow these ideas from people that have been through what you're going through and what your potential target audience is going through. You see, it's quite funny. I actually do this podcast every single day. So if you, um, you know, subscribe to this podcast, you will be receiving either a 20 to 30 minute uh, episode every single day. And some people ask me, how do you come up with so much stuff? Well, first of all, I've got a message and I know my target audience and I know exactly what they're going through. And each and every day I enhance my knowledge and confidence within myself to these people by actually reading. All right. I was on another person's podcast the other day and they were asking me, why you, why are you documenting so much? Why, why are you road mapping for other people? And then I said, you know what? I've got so much information, stories, and ideas that I've accumulated in my journey that me not sharing them, I'm doing a disservice to other people. All right. And now me reading is now affording me the opportunity to actually reach out to more people and um, help them have a happier existence. So it's a win-win for everybody else. You know, I win by actually, um, you know, gaining enough knowledge in order for me to make sense of my world and my client's world. And in the process, those that are receiving that information are actually making better decisions on, and also, you know, doing stuff that is helping them have businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. But our topic today is talking about why you particularly should be the one that is reading. Because we all know the magical brain boosting powers of reading. You know, reading for as little as six minutes a day can actually lower stress by 68%. And I'm not talking reading Mills and Boons or romantic novels or sci-fi stuff. I'm talking the non-fiction books that actually have uh, methods and strategies for us to have a happier existence. And it actually has health benefits to be sitting down and reading because it reduces the risk of Alzheimer's disease, um, I think, by a lot. And it helps you live longer and make you more 
empathetic because the more you realize that you, there's so much that you don't know, the more you understand the world as it is. Because some people stop reading at age 12, which means whatever you read yesterday and you've been reading over the years, you are head and shoulders above anybody else who is an average human being out there. I mean, one day when you get to meet me on a Zoom call, you would notice I have over 3,000 books in my bookcase behind me. And the reason why I love books so much is because every time I walk into my office, it humbles me. It shows me because every book that's on the bookshelf there is a book I haven't read or is a book that I want to refer to once in a while. So each and every time I walk in and look at those books, it shows me how much of the world's knowledge that I actually do not know. You know, it's quite funny. I think it's between 4 to 8% of all the world's knowledge that has actually been indexed by Google. And we are clamoring ourselves with that little information that is on the internet. Now, can you imagine if you immerse yourself in a world of uh, discovery, each and every page that you're turning, you know, uh, you know, reading and getting to know more things and really making sense of the world around yourself. Can you imagine how that will change your life and the lives of those around you? And of course, it can actually improve your language skills. Like, look at this. You're probably listening to this and thinking, wait a minute, I can't pick up his accent or whatever it is. You know, I was born in Zimbabwe. I was actually born in a small town in Zimbabwe in Africa. And growing up, life was pretty tough. You know, we didn't have a lot of money so we could afford to buy books. And that actually meant what we knew was just passed down by the elders who knew not a lot themselves anyway. So we actually did not have any role models. Now, you know, there was one time um, when um, we had an exchange uh, student teacher who came and started working at our school. And she was from Australia. And she told me all about Australia and was... Uh, showing us, you know, through books again, uh, koalas, uh, kangaroos, and that just taught me a valuable lesson that I too can be, do, and have a happier existence. And, and where I was was temporary. Now, just that exposure to those books showed me that we live in a world with infinite possibility for people who actually can dream big. And if you have the courage to, call, to follow those dreams, man... The world is your oyster. And for the rest of my time at school, I worked my butt off just to learn as much as I could. And look at this now. I'm sitting in my office doing this podcast, connecting with you so that you too can be, do, and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Even the way I started my business, you know, I, I was working in a restaurant and I was, um, you know, as soon as I landed in Australia, I started working in a restaurant and I almost got fired for having created a Facebook page um, by the owner of the restaurant, you know, because the reason why I created that page was so that I could connect with, um, you know, the people that I was working with. I didn't understand why nobody connected with me after, um, you know, work, everybody was just focused on their station. So I went on and I created a Facebook page and I almost got fired for that because back in that time, any social media presence meant that people were subject to bad reviews, all right? So when the um, business owner came in, he's like, who did this? And I was like, oh, snap, uh, it was me. And he's like, put it down. And in the process of me trying to delete it, a few people started leaving really good reviews on there. And then he came back to me again. And he's like, okay, stop doing the dishes. You do the internet now. Now, the reason why I then... You know, jumped onto that job. I, I knew nothing about social media. I knew nothing about the whole, um, you know, ecosystem around digital marketing. And guess what I started doing? I took to the library uh, on Ligon Street day, you know, in that um, Collingwood area, they I went to the library day and I would read stuff on social media, I would read stuff on, um, you know, digital marketing. And eventually I started gaining a bit of confidence that, yes, I can actually do this. You know, fast track five, six years later, I now run one of the largest um, digital agencies in Australia, or in Melbourne currently, and we're on track to actually um, start really going international. It was all through books, really consolidating my education. And now 
I've actually made it part of my day to read each and every single day where I wake up and I'm reading a minimum four hours a day. So I can hear you rolling your eyes and saying, four hours? How do you manage that? Well, I'll tell you what. There's a tool or system called Pomodoro, where it's scientifically proven that any human being can concentrate for a maximum 30 minutes. And basically, if you take maybe 25 minutes out of that 30 minutes and focus on a project, or maybe in my instance, I use it for reading, I then give myself the rest of the five minutes to treat myself. Either it's hugging or playing with my kids or scrolling through social media or brewing myself a coffee. Now, if you notice throughout the whole day, you've got pockets of 30 minute slots that you are either just doing nothing. And if you actually are strict with yourself, you start taking a tally on how many of these 30 minute slots that you have that you can actually convert into knowledge sessions all right and i started off with maybe just 30 minutes a day and then i upgraded to an hour and then i went on to two hours and as of the last two years i've been managing four hours while i'm running a, a, a fully successful business while i'm a dad while i'm a you know an employer while i'm also you know a friend a husband all of those things all right so if you look up throughout your day there are numerous 30 minute slots within your four hour i mean 24 hour day so you could actually utilize those for gaining knowledge. And if you're a coach or consultant, I suspect you're actually building your business into a lifestyle business because people who are playing the lifestyle game, they usually work three to four enjoyable days a week. And then they're um, usually part of a team of three to 10 people and they're running a profitable business and they actually earn a personal healthy income and are passionate about what they do. If you're not doing that, then it means your business is struggling. And some of these people can actually work from anywhere in the world and they often do. And these businesses and people, you know, have seen and embraced that we are living in special times when you don't have to be like a factory worker where you are chained to your computer or to your desk and neither white collar uh, people are doing that because a lot of people are now working from home so if you're actually self-employed and you're creating a business that's profitable and enjoyable why would you want to be tethered to your phone or tethered to your desk as if it is some sort of life support okay you know you can actually make money have fun travel and deliver great value to others in the process because a lifestyle business gives you um the actual liberty and freedom that everybody seems to um crave for and in the process, if you're educating yourself and learning more along as you go, guess what? You will actually be increasing the value that you bring to the marketplace. And we all know that we get paid in direct proportion to the value that we bring to the marketplace. Right. But why is it still so hard to read despite the fact that we all know about all of these benefits? Why is it that, um, you know, people fail to just go through a book whenever they can, or actually um, even an audio book, just listening through as if you, as, as the same way you're listening to this uh, podcast. Now with social media updates, near um, constant news alerts, which most of it is fake anyway, and other forms of media like YouTube video or a new show on Netflix or whatever podcast you're listening to, all of these things are competing for our attention and reading obviously then falls to the wayside. Now, considering the vast majority of us are stuck at home, um, maybe, you know, working from home offices or whatever it is, there's never been a better time to actually start reading more. And let me just go through to you, you know, some of the things that I feel like if you know um, why you should actually start picking up a book and read you could actually do society a favor because the more you know, the more you can impart knowledge to other people because I viscerally believe we're here to live, to learn, and to contribute. We're here to live the best life out there possible. And how are you going to know how to learn, uh, how to live that best life if you haven't learned what it actually entails to have that best life? And once you do, 
send the elevator down and contribute to others all right and you know when 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 we're flying you know just giving reference to to all of that stuff when we're flying the flight attendant always says put your mask on first all right and now i'm the flight attendant telling you read first before you go out there and try and touch other people's lives because let's not forget if we're in the transformation business which i know a lot of coaches consultants and um small business owners are we are dicing and slicing and dicing with other people's lives man so why would you want to go out there and touch other people's lives with your dirty hands with your uninformed opinions that were formed in 1991 when you left high school think about that so constantly be feeding your mind with new information even if it's old information but it's new to you you know so pick up do society a deed and pick up a book and read you know and one other thing don't try to go through a book let the book go through you because every time you finish a page or a chapter just ask yourself what have i learned what can i share with others what can i actually apply to to you know to to get the most out of what i just learned you know you know you should also listen to maybe a podcast or a ted talk and abide the same person who wrote that book just so you can understand the concept of the book a little bit more succinctly because sometimes you know there's people like myself I might mince my words because english is not my first language but if you read my books or if you read um you know the ebooks that I put out there everything that I've written is actually very precise because you can't really go wrong with words And one other thing is a simple and effective way to read more books is just to add on small chunks of reading time into your daily habits. Like I told you about the Pomodoro method. You know, maybe when you're making coffee every morning, set a book on your coffee um next to your coffee maker there. You know, while you're waiting for the coffee to brew, it's usually 5 minutes and you can commit to actually reading one to two or three pages. the key is to make reading accessible and easy to do rather than saying oh i'll sit down and read for 30 minutes or maybe um you know when the time arrives you will, the time will never arrive we are in the transformation business transform your life today by actually changing the habits and making it easy for you to attain those habits come on you tell these things to people why are you not utilizing them yourself you know because we've been given the opportunity to actually slow down as coaches and consultants we know this we are talking about this all the time and this is where the time you know this is this it, 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 in this time where we are asked to be still we've got space to read now let books guide you into a creative space where you can actually release any anxiety and feel a sense of normalcy because let me tell you something you might be stuck on a problem or whatever it is when somebody puts something in a book i kid you not they really have shortened the learning curve for you that something that would have taken them a lifetime to learn you can literally learn it in 3 or 4 pages a day If if maybe studying by yourself is a problem and you like you like being surrounded by other people why don't you start or join a book club when you start one guess what that does it gives you yet another opportunity to reach out to your audience with another book you know giving people value or content based on what it is that you would have you you would have uh, you know read You know, I've gotten so wrapped up in a lot of digital stuff and the reason why I actually like a physical book is because I've got three computers, three computer screens in front of me plus my laptop and phone. All right? So the only way that I sort of break the pattern of, you know, seeing the four squares uh, in front of me is by actually opening up a book and just chilling with it with a cup of coffee or something like that. You know because we get bogged down in the digital news social media that when you know if somebody just ask you you know certain things we start repeating what we've seen on social media you know sometimes you just ask yourself when was the last time you actually read a book you know when was the last time you actually read a book because let me tell you something just finishing your first book 
um, is so satisfying because it gives you that sense of accomplishment. And you, it soon becomes addictive, you know, because the whole process actually forces you to disconnect with the constant ting buzzes of social media in, in the non-ending 24-hour news cycle. And you start prioritizing, you know, reading books instead of just following, um, you know, the rabbit hole of social media. Because if you make reading a part of your daily routine, whether it's in the morning or before bed, you are less likely to find something, uh, you know, that will distract you. And in the process, you actually start enjoying your day because you've got something to look forward to. So just carve out a few minutes every single day where you set your phone in another room or across the room. Just unplug and read a book that you've always been wanting to read. You know, because if you look at this, what goes into your brain is what comes out of your mouth. Right now, I can just sit down with a topic and just start ranting and all the 300 or 400 books that I've read will just start appearing in my brain. And sometimes I have to listen back to this podcast just to see if what I said made any sense, you know? And there's one thing that happens also when maybe you have to commute to go to work. If you take public transportation to work, commit to reading while you're on your commute. You know, I'm also a fan of only reading maybe old-fashioned uh, paper books just so you can miss, minimize the distraction of text or email uh, uh, alerts while you're on your way to work. You go in coming in from a totally different century and when you get into your place of work, it feels new. You know why? Because you had gone on a journey in your own head, you know, while you were reading that book. You know? Because... Like I told you how I've managed to manipulate my day into like 30 minute intervals. You know, the time of day you read can actually increase your reading speed and comprehension. Because I've noticed when I've just woken up, I read faster than when it's later on at night and I'm a bit tired, you know. So sometimes when you do it first thing in the morning, you actually cover a lot more mileage and you start your day fresh or immediately following a nap or immediately after you've done you know some aer aerobic exercise blood is flowing your eyes are moving a bit faster and you've got no lag and your eyes are a little bit clearer you know so i usually recommend keeping a book either in your car or your purse or in your gym bag because just when you've finished gyming there if you can just sit down for 30 minutes while you you know in rest mode and use that moment to actually get in more information. Have you ever noticed that when you've worked out and you've worked out a sweat, your body's trying to get as much oxygen as possible? Can you actually use that time to be also getting your brain as much information as possible? Wow. Because having access to a book makes it easy and convenient for you to actually read. And over time, this will become a habit, you know? And one of my favorite quotes is, miss a meal if you have to, but don't miss a book. And I think it was Jim Rohn that mentioned this. You know, in an increasingly noisy world, it's more important than ever to be proactive about what we're consuming. You know, sometimes you can, you know, go into audiobooks because you can, you can get through a few titles. But I love the physical book only simply because when I grew up, we didn't have that many books. All right. And, and, and half of the time, it's... It's just that scenario that gives me the sense of pride that now I can afford this. Now I can do this. And now that I can, man, I'm going to take as much of the information that I missed out as a kid as possible. Imagine your 10-year-old self right now knowing that you can afford all the candy in the candy store, but you're not buying it. Do you think 10-year-old you is happy with you right now? Because as a kid, you'll be like, oh my God, whenever I get rich or if I get money, I want to buy all the candy that I can. But now you can, but you're not. You've got all the information available in the world right now to create a million dollar business, a billion dollar business, a trillion dollar company. But what are you doing? You're just letting other people go ahead because you're not taking the time to pick up a book and read. You know, you read great books that you want to read. You know, <sighs> Okay, let me let me break this down again. Read great books that you want to read. 
Because these are two separate and important parts. Because if you read not great books, you won't want to read more books. If it's not great, stop reading it. And if you read great books because somebody said you should, but you don't really want to read them, you won't be reading a lot more books. All right. So if a book resonates with you, go for it. If it doesn't, if you find it difficult to get through the first paragraphs, don't worry yourself. Half of the books are just repeated information. Just find your book. Just find your flair and go with it. Because ask yourself, what are you looking to learn and what growth do you want to achieve? And then you identify the books that will help you get there. Because if somebody recommends a book, all right, and that's not the thing that you want to learn, you're just wasting your time trying to uh, access information that you're not yet ready for. All right, it's not a race. Oh no, is it a marathon? Read for the pleasure, enjoyment and satisfaction that you're growing through the process. And there's one thing that normally happens, you know, because because I read so much. I've gotten to where I no longer buy books, but instead maybe I go to the library and check out for a title or two at a time. And I also go into um, secondhand bookshops or I look for books on Marketplace, you know, where people are getting rid of, um, you know, you know, just decluttering or whatever. You will find gems that are not in the mainstream, but people that have had these books for a long time. You know, I just sit in a very quiet place early in the morning with a cup of coffee and really contemplate what do I want to learn? And a great way for me to return what I read is, is to just take notes about the book and, and things that pop out when I read that book. You know, at the end of the day, what we are is just on a journey to self-discovery. And if you find the right book, it will actually take you on that journey. All right. So I've got a three pronged method for reading more books. All right. Like I mentioned earlier, determine why you want to read more books. Find your why. You know, because finding your why is much more important than asking how to. Because once you find your why, you'll find your way. I mean, come on. As coaches, we are teaching this stuff to people every single day. And once you have found your why, decide what you want to extract from these books that you're reading. Because thousands and thousands of books are published each year, but maybe none of them actually are what you want. So you must first decide what information, knowledge, um, you know, or desire you, you want to achieve. Either you want it for entertainment or for skills or what you actually want to extract from books, you know, in that year. And then make a list of the books that will provide that for you. All right. And figure out what you want to remember from each book that you've read. I mean, there's nothing wrong with reading for reading's sake. But if you want to really access the information at a later date, then highlight, underscore, flag, bookmark, use sticky notes, or keep a separate file with information that you want at your fingertips after you've set the book down. Just make sure you're doing that, you know? And each time that we open a book, we're opening our minds to fresh ideas, fresh perspectives, and better ways of living our lives and approaching our problems. So deciding just to block 10 minutes a day to read a book can actually elevate the trajectory of your life. Because if you think you're busy to do that, then consider what will happen if, if you're busy not to. All right. And lastly, you know, you want to choose books that are written um, by people that you actually um, want to become or people that have got results that you want to achieve. Because obviously what they are now giving you are 10 by 10 instructions on how they have actually achieved that which they have um, achieved in life. All right. So at the end of the time, I, I, I kid you not, we are on a journey to actually be, do and have a happier existence. And what we are trying to achieve has already been achieved by other people out there. All we've got to do is pick up a book read it and be consistent about getting the information from those books. 
Well, I can't wait to exchange books with you and exchange ideas that you would have gathered from books. And um, if you want to get a book recommendation or just find out what books I'm reading or how I'm going through, why don't you just schedule a call with me so that we can discuss where you are and how far you've gone, you know, with your business, just so your business can be profitable and enjoyable. I can't wait to see you become a success because I know you deserve a life of success. Now just go after it. Pick up a book and read. All right. The more you read, the more you're going to be a valuable leader and a thought leader in the market space right there. I can't wait to start celebrating with you. In the meantime, subscribe to this podcast so that you can get, you know, all this information that um, just comes out on a whim. And I'm doing this every single day. So subscribe and um, I'll catch you tomorrow if you've subscribed. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, let's continue the conversation in the Live Long Digital community. Become a Live Long Digital community member today. This community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So look no further than the Live Long Digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level. www.community.livelongdigital.com.au.